Good morning. I'm Robin Hogue, pastor with the people who make Skyline Presbyterian Church their spiritual home, and we want to welcome you to online worship today. As we begin, we want to thank the people who help bring worship to us. They include Evan Hogue, who brings his gifts in recording mixing software, Tracy Collins, who brings her gifts in graphic design and administrative support. We thank Carla Epperson for her beautiful gifts on the piano, Anne Lyman, Robin Derby, Larry Hogue for their gifts in singing. And today, we thank both Fern and Evan Hogue as our lay leaders this week. This week's flowers are in memory of Lorna Henriksen and donated by her children, Chris and Jim. We are so very blessed as a church with the many people who are ready to share what God has given them. Now, as we continue to gather and get ready for our at-home worship, I'd like you, if possible, to gather the following at a place where you will worship. Bring a candle. It represents Christ's light, which is always with us. And go ahead and light it now. Bring a cross. It represents God's redeeming love for us in Christ. A Bible, which holds God's word for us and is available to us in all times and in all circumstances. Bring a small bowl of water. Remind us of our baptism. And today is a communion Sunday for us, the first Sunday of the month. So bring a plate with a piece of bread or a cracker, a cup of grape juice, if you have it, wine if you prefer. And we're going to use them in home communion later on in today's service. And with these symbols before us, let's prepare our hearts for worship as Carla plays. Today's announcement includes letting you know to reserve the Sunday, June 27th for a celebration of my ministry at Skyline and some business related to my retirement. The congregational meeting will be after the morning service and details will be coming to you online and in the mail. Today's service is planned to give us a pass, a guide with 
which to interact with scripture and wrestle with God a bit, and in doing so, have a moment of coming face to face with the divine, right here, right now. So come and lay all the worries of the day aside. Take a deep breath with me, and we'll start with prayer. Holy One, we pray that you will open our eyes to the marvelous evidence of your care for us, Open our ears to hear your voice. Join us with one another in a true community of care in which the needs of each of us are the concern of all of us. And as we worship, receive our prayers, our thoughts, our songs. Amen. This is the response of reading. Your part is in the bold. I will bless the Lord. At all times. My soul. Shall rejoice in the Lord. Come, glorify our God with me. Let's pass the peace of Christ to one another. If you're able to do so, turn to the person near you and say the peace of Christ be with you. The response from the other person is and also with you one imperfect soul to another. And if you're worshiping where it's just the two of us, let's pass the peace between us. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. This is the responsive prayer of confession. Your part is in the bold. Lord, we confess that we do not always listen to your word of grace. We do not always speak the good news of your love. We do not always live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God, and listen to our silent prayer. Please continue in personal and silent prayer. Friends, God has mercy on us through the love and grace of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, God sees us and invites us home. In Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. This is the good news for you, for me, and for the world. Amen.
I want to invite the young people of our church to give me your full attention for our time together. We just sang about becoming a servant to brothers and sisters. And you might have thought about that being inside your family group, maybe between cousins. Jesus, when he calls us brothers and sisters, really means everyone. Everyone who loves him needs us to welcome them and help them. That's what it means to be a servant to them. It means to give them what they need and let them give us what we need. It's a beautiful way to be the church together, and I'm thinking you're already discovering that. My prayer is that for your whole life, you will keep learning new ways to be a servant, to be a helper, to be a giver, and to be a receiver from brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for our young people, and we pray that you would bless them right now. Give them ways to show your love to other people and give them ways to receive your love from other people. In your name we pray, amen. We have two scriptures today. The first one comes out of the Psalms 130. Listen now with me for the word of God. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second passage comes from the Gospel of Mark. We're in the third chapter, beginning with the 20th verse. Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. And when his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he's out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Beelzebul, by the prince of demons, he's driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you. People can be forgiven all their sins and every slander but they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, and they are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying, He has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived, and standing outside, they sent someone in to call him out. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my brother, my, mo my mother and brothers, he asked. And then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother, my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for a living word to us. I remember a gentleman telling me that his greatest fear is that someday he will be found out. What do you mean, I asked him. Well, you know, that they will know I'm not who I say I am, that I'm not who I want them to think I am, that I'm not who I want to be, he answered. And beneath his fear, he knows that his pieces don't all fit together. And from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as told by St. Mark, Jesus has been dealing with people whose pieces don't fit together well. 
So far, and it's only chapter 3 of Mark's Gospel, Jesus has cast out demons, healed Peter's mother-in-law, cleansed a leper, and caused a paralyzed person to walk. The interior lives and the communities of these individuals are divided, like a house divided against itself. Their lives are not their own. They live with inner conflict and turmoil, These people that Jesus has healed had been separated from their community and all that gave them security, identity. Their outer conditions of illness, paralysis, and possession point to the inner conflict, the battle between health and disease, not just physically, but socially and spiritually. That battle and interior conflict has been around since our first parents separated themselves from God and hid among the trees of the garden. It's seen in Israel's wanting a king so they can be like other nations, forgetting that their calling is to be different from other nations, forgetting that it is through Israel that God is going to act to benefit all people. This division and inner conflict remains a reality in today's world and in our lives. A marriage divided is a divorce. A nation divided results in vitriolic politics and in its extreme civil war. An economy divided yields poverty and injustice. A community divided becomes individualism and tribalism, prejudice and violence. Humanity divided is all these things on a global level. Faith divided is sin. And we all know what it's like to live divided lives. You know those times when your outside and your insides don't match up? That's what it means to be a house divided. You're one person at work, another at home. Your language changes in different settings. Your vocabulary gets coarse or soft. You act one way with certain people and a different way with other people. Life gets divided into pieces. Behavior, beliefs, and ethics become situational. There's the work life, the family life, the prayer life, the personal life, the social life, the in-person life, the online life. And pretty soon, we're left with a bunch of broken pieces. Would you agree that it seems that we are forever trying to put the pieces of our lives together? I'm beginning to think that this is what drives the religious authorities to oppose Jesus. It's why his family tries to restrain him. I believe that in their own way, each is trying to put the pieces of their life together, but it's not working for them, and Jesus exposes it. Jesus exposes that the pieces won't fit. Their life and their world are neither what they thought they were nor what Jesus knows they could be. And one reality has fallen away, and a new one is ready to rise. Jesus always stands before us as the image of unity, wholeness, integration. He is the stronger one. He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He puts our lives back together. And as he does so, Jesus offers a different image of what life might look like. He does so by revealing the division in our lives, those houses that cannot stand, and the crumbling of our kingdoms and disordered bits. And even when it is for our own good, even with the offer of new life and intended for wholeness, it is a hard place to be. It means that one way or another, change of some sort is coming. And most most of us don't like that. Many of us are frightened by it. So to keep Jesus and his beautiful and terrifying invitation to change at a safe arm's length, people say, he has gone out of his mind. He's crazy. He's crazy to change people like this. The religious authorities accuse him of allegiance to Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. They project onto Jesus their own interior conflict and division. 
they have declared that which is holy, sacred, and beautiful to be unclean, bereft of God, and dirty. Their accusations say more about themselves than Jesus. Their accusations reveal the depth of the conflict and the division within them. Their accusations are a way of avoiding themselves. Now, it's hard to look at the division and inner conflict within our lives. Yet I'm going to say this with the most loving tone possible. In the beginning of wholeness, however, is acknowledging our brokenness. So how and to what extent have we created conflict and division within our own relationships? In what ways do we live fragmented lives, parceling out pieces here and there? Let me ask you, what is it that shatters your life? Anger? Resentment? Greed? Insecurity? Perfectionism? Sorrow? Loss, fear, envy, guilt, loneliness. There are all sorts of forces, things, events, sometimes even people by which our lives are broken and through which we are separated from God and from others and even from ourselves. Christ is stronger than the fragments of our lives. Christ is stronger than anything that can fragment our lives. He binds the forces that divide. He heals the wounds that separate. He refashions pieces into a new whole. There is nothing about your life and my life that cannot be put together by the love of God in Christ. We only need to ask his help and accept his healing. Amen. I had decided to follow Jesus. I had decided to follow Jesus. I had decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Go and go. As we approach the time for the Lord's Supper, I want to let people know that this is a sacrament that we, in which we serve in Jesus' name. You don't need to be a member of Skyline to take communion with us. You don't have to be a Presbyterian somewhere else. Uh, this is for all people who follow Jesus Christ. So we are invited to this table not because of who we are, but because of what Christ has done. It's not because of what we've done, but because of who Christ is, that we are invited to come as we are to this table of grace. Jesus would say, no turning back. No turning back. Come as you are. Come with the pieces scattered. Come with the pieces coming back together into a new whole, come as you long for God to touch your life and bring healing and forgiveness, mercy and grace. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Holy God, we thank you. We thank you for your gifts of life and relationship with you from the very beginning. You spoke a word, and out of nothing our world came to be. You brought forth life, abundant life. 
in the seas and on the land and in the skies, you brought forth the human family. You blessed creation with goodness. And yet our first parents took life on their own terms and began to define good and evil and the pieces of our lives began to come apart. They tried to hide from you and we do too. And down through history, people have longed for you and hid from you and longed for you and hid from you just like we do. And you've always been faithful with your love, your grace, your reach. And so we thank you. We thank you that in the fullness of time you came to be with us, God with skin on, Jesus, God incarnate, fully God and fully human. And Jesus brought forth the kingdom of God, telling us we are near to your presence, that you accept the outsider, that you keep moving the boundaries outward so that more and more and more of your children can come home to your own heart. And we praise you that Jesus took the weight and the power of death and sin in himself and defeated them on the cross and in the witness of the empty Easter tomb and now lives forever with you and the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the promise of eternal life given to us through Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Holy Spirit, that from the beginning with the Father and the Son you have served together in glory, in intimacy, drawing us deeper and deeper into the redeeming, healing, reconciling love and grace of God. And so we thank you that you are here with us and that you take these ordinary pieces of cup and loaf and serve your divine purposes in our lives. Amen. So now go ahead and take that bread or cracker from your table and hold it. And hear the words that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke on the last night he was with his disciples. He took bread from the table and broke it and offered it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took a cup. This was a cup of wine and he said, this is the wine of the new promises, the new covenant. This covenant is sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of this, do so remembering me. And so go ahead and take that bread or cracker and dip it in the cup and eat it now in an attitude of prayerful gratitude for all that God has done for you. Amen. And let's pray again. Lord God, Holy One, for the bread which you have broken and for the wine which you have poured, for the words which you have spoken, we give you thanks. Send us from this table of grace, changed a bit more into Christ-likeness for your purposes in the world. Bring the broken pieces of our lives together that we might serve you in broken humanity. Amen. Story, bring it.
my friends, we are much loved people, created in the image of God. We've just sung, grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving you whom we adore. As Jesus extends the invitation to put these pieces of our lives back together again, and for some of us it may be even for the first time to have the pieces fit into a pattern of beautiful wholeness, Jesus will also give us the wisdom and the courage we need to say yes to his healing work. Go in the peace, love, mercy, and presence of a saving and triune God. Amen.